go. Hey there, friends. It's 9, 9.02, and it's such a pleasure to be with you tonight. Come on in, join this live session. Now is the time. Now is the time for immigration. Now is the time for freedom. Now is the time to um, get your situation sorted out. Your situation. Millions and millions of people have a situation that many people don't even know about in their life, okay? The situation for many of them is private. It is secret. It is unknown whether you're poor or rich. You have that issue in your life, okay? And it's called immigration. And so if you're feeling down about your immigration situation, come on in, guys. Grab some of this energy. It's good energy tonight. This is a positive environment, a great place for you to be. Just listen in tonight. Interact with me. Say hello as you're coming in and let me know how you're feeling and how your day was. And well, don't get too deep into your day. Just how are you feeling and who is on? And I have this big smile on my face tonight, friends, because I'm thinking about some of you, some of you who I've met with. I know who you are. I know what you look like. And we've laughed in my office. We've you've cried in my office. Sometimes we've talked, we've interacted. And I'm thinking about you because I know that you're watching tonight because you always watch. So come on in friends, share this live session with your feed as well. If you're watching on Facebook, welcome, uh, TikTok, Hi there, Instagram. Welcome. Um, YouTube. Hello, McBean immigration TV subscribers. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey, an immigration lawyer in New York, working with clients at McBean Law. You can reach out to us, friends, at McBeanLaw.com to request an appointment with us, or you can um, McBean, uh, call us. Call us, okay? Call us at 888 um, 462 four zero zero six okay contact us that's the number to reach us i know some of you may have our old number with which, which starts with five one six okay when we were in long island now we're in white plains new york uh reach out to us at the 800 number now Tonight, I'm going to have a Q&A session with you guys for about 45 minutes, like what I've been doing. And um, I'm going to go through your questions and answer as many as I possibly can tonight. And we'll be I'll be back with you on Monday, okay, at uh, Monday at 9 p.m. So just know that you will have another opportunity. Also, guys, subscribe to our firm's newsletter, the number one immigration newsletter. If you have not yet subscribed, subscribe today at McBeanLaw.com forward slash subscribe. Certainly read our success stories on our website, friends, mcbeanlaw.com forward slash success to see what we've been doing for our clients. Freedom now. Let's go. Let's go. Freedom now. Type it in, guys. Freedom now. Now is the time for this freedom. Um, someone commented yesterday, I think, on YouTube and said, oh, you're misleading people with this freedom now stuff. There is no freedom now. And so my response was, go to mcbeanlaw.com forward slash success where you will see and hear about freedom. Freedom is real. It's possible. It might not be, you might not have a pathway. I might even have met with you today um, and told you, I'm sorry, I don't see a way forward for you. I don't want you guys to lose heart. Those who do not have that freedom pathway right now. I believe that things can change for you. Just keep the faith and just keep your immigration record clean. Okay. Now, friends, um, I, yesterday I shared with you the fee increase update. Okay. Go on McBean Immigration TV to watch the replay of that video where I, I broke down the fees and how it's going to work. And, uh, but before I get into your questions, um, I want to make mention that Oh, freedom now, freedom now, freedom now. I see it in the comments. Thank you, YouTube. Freedom now, freedom now. That um, the fee increase issue has um, has gotten, you know, people are concerned about it, of course. But like I said last night, in my opinion, I didn't think that it's as bad as we were expecting. And that is the truth. All right, so go and watch that video. The fee increase is still going to have an impact, of course, but um, it is not as, you know, severe. Well, here's an example. Let's talk about adjustment of status real quickly because I've been getting that question. If you're here in the United States and you're applying for adjustment of status today, the current fee for the entire process is one. 
$1,760 for the entire process now under this new fee schedule that's going to go into effect on April 1st. It's you're looking at uh, $3,000, $3,005. Okay, so this is an increase. The difference is $1,245 for the entire thing. Okay, now you do not have to do the entire thing. At a minimum, you must do the I-130 and the I-45. But who is going to apply for a green card without the work permit? So you've got to throw that in there. And they're, they're saying that they're only going to charge you half the cost of that. And that's $260. If you'd like a travel document to be able to leave the country, get with your advanced parole while your application is pending, then you'll have to pay $630 for the travel document. So that's the big difference right there. Okay. But go on my website, um, uh, McBean Immigration TV and watch yesterday's live session now youtube and insta and uh facebook my sound system is saying i'm way too loud for you i'm gonna tone it down a little bit because i'm in the red here i'm in the red and i don't want to be in the red so um hold on one second okay let me just kind of tone it down a little bit okay if that's better let me know let's go through questions and tonight i'm actually going to start with instagram i'm going to go this way all right so instagram how are you guys feeling what questions do you have for me today um let's see let's get some questions on the um let's see someone says can i file right away as i'm awaiting for my birth certificate from my home country or is it advisable that I pull together all of the documents before applying? Paulus is asking. So Paulus, it certainly depends on what type of case you're going through and proving your identity is critical for immigration, okay? Really for all cases. So if you don't have another document, uh, if the birth certificate is a primary document on that checklist that the government is giving you, um, then you, you, you're gonna need that. But if you have another um, uh, form, uh, another way of proving your identity, like your passport, that might do. But again, it really depends on the type of case that you're uh, working on. Um, let's see who else on Instagram. Now, someone is uh, Abdul is asking uh, as a citizen filing for my wife. How long does the process generally take now? So uh, um, Abdul go on uscis's website to take a look at that based on your location pull up the city the field office um, nearest you in your city and it will tell you generally what they're up to not to rely on that data entirely because as we know that data is not 100 percent accurate but it will give you a sense of you know what you're looking at on average it really it's like four months to maybe a year uh, depending on where you're at in the country. And it also depends on whether your spouse is going to do adjustment of status or whether your spouse is overseas and what's going on at that U.S. embassy. And so this is something that I basically share with you guys each week. Check the visa bulletin and check um, if your case is overseas, check the visa bulletin if you're in the family preference category. Look at that. Um, but for immediate relatives, um, you know, the visa bulletin is, is not for you. Okay. If you're an immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, the visa bulletin is not for you. Um, but generally it's about four months to, um, a year for most, uh, immediate relative cases. Um, now let's see, oops, Instagram, I'm getting, I don't know if it's reconnecting, poor connection. I'm not sure why. Pause. I'll get back to... Oh, geez. Come on. Instagram, if you guys are there, if it looks like I'm frozen. Um, am I frozen on Instagram? And while that is sorting out, looks like I've lost them. I may have to get back on here. Let me jump over to TikTok, okay? Uh, am I back on Instagram? If I'm back on Instagram, tell me. It looks like I'm back. Um, okay, wait in time for VAWA. It's uh, three years. Okay. Uh, another how? <laughs> Stop with the SOS. Stop with the SOS. Black Tiger. No need. No need. Give me a break. All right, with all of the graphics. But so maybe it worked. I don't know. I'm going to answer your question right now. Okay. So um, how long? 
to wait for an interview in an affirmative asylum case. Um, asylum case, you could be waiting for many years in this country for even the interview, six years, eight years. It's going to really sh certainly depend on the field, the asylum office in your, um, in your city. Am I back on in, uh, Instagram? Am I, can you guys, uh, again, it looks like it's paused. I don't know. Instagram, you guys let me know what the story is. Okay. Um, can I petition for my mom who is here on a tourist visa uh yes you can file for your mother um for adjustment of status if you're a u.s citizen okay um uh i filed for my husband but can ask for a visa mina i'm not certain what you're asking about right there rephrase that for me please um Someone says that my case, it's an immediate family relative category, and it's been a year now. Um, that's, like I said, it depends on the case, the, the um, you know, which category, okay? Um, is it a spousal petition? Is it a parent, of, uh, a child filing for a parent? What category is it? And it will depend on your field office, if this is uh, adjustment of status here, okay? Yes, we do, VAWA. Someone says, I just called you. You won't reach us tonight because the office, our office hours are from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. Eastern, okay? You could leave a message or you could go on our website, mcbeanlaw.com's website, and fill out our form, and someone from our team will contact you to book an appointment. Um, let's see, parent case, NVC. Um, hello, um, if the immigration court keep moving your master calendar hearing, so you're in removal, AJ, and they keep changing your hearing, maybe your case is being changed. Maybe you're, they're going through docket changes, potentially. Um, the immigration court system is facing a huge backlog, over 3 million cases in court right now waiting and so you um you know your case might just be going through some internal shifting with respect to the docket or even judges changing um a change of judge um it doesn't say anything as as it relates to it doesn't mean that it has anything to do with the merit of your case okay so don't be concerned like oh my goodness something's wrong with my case that's why they keep changing the hearing um, it has nothing to do with that. It's just internal docket management that they're, um, usually that's, us that's normally the case. Um, USCIS sa said, um, I may have received immigration benefit by misrepresentation and fraud. If you, you know, you need to contact us for that one. Okay. Contact us for that one because we work on the fraud, the misrepresentation waiver all the, you know, regularly, almost every week we have, it's on our docket. So contact us so that we can look into whether you're eligible for the waiver. Um, and it, by the way, when they say that to you on the record that they believe that you've committed fraud or misrepresentation, guys, take that incredibly seriously. And if there's a way to fight it with a waiver, certainly fight it and don't leave that on your record, that stain on your record, okay? Um, Instagram, am I back? Can you guys see me and hear me okay? Am I all good on Instagram? Um, now, uh, one last question here before I turn over to YouTube. Um, adjustment, uh, hold on a second. You guys are going so fast on um, TikTok right now. Um, can I apply for citizenship after five years having a green card and separated from my spouse? Um, yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay. All right. Let's see what's going on over here on YouTube and also on, um, thank you for that chance, um, YouTube and Facebook. Um, September says I filed, hold on a second, guys. Um, I filed, I filed an asylum with my three kids. Um, father is a citizen, um, citizen want to withdraw the kids and file for them. Will it affect me? So are you the principal? It sounds like you're the principal on that asylum case and your three children are on it their father is a citizen and he 
um, wants to file for the kids. You can, it, so if you're, you can, uh, if, if your case, if the case is at USCIS, an affirmative asylum case, it, nothing stops you at this point from um, the children, the father filing for the children for the green card um, and then withdrawing from the asylum case if USCIS didn't, hasn't called you in for an, hasn't called you in for an interview yet. Now, things are a little different, however, if you're in, if your asylum case is in removal, okay? If the asylum case is in removal with the children on that removal case, then they're going to have to go through a two-step process to get them entirely out of the um, system. So the father would file the I-130 for them and get that approved, and then the removal case would need to be tackled. If it if you're in you're in active removal proceedings, then that could be resolved to get it dismissed as it relates to the children, and then an adjustment of status process can be done for the children at USCIS. Um, so you know, contact us to talk about these issues. Um, but your kids getting off the case shouldn't be a problem for you as the principal. I'm glad to know that the children has that they have an alternative pathway to a green card through the father. Um, so that's really great news for them. Okay, uh, but it should not affect you your asylum case. Um, now let's see, Mrs. Oliver, Olivia, Mrs. Olivia says if I am married to a U.S. If I married a U.S. citizen and he didn't file for me, if I married a U.S. citizen and he didn't file for me, uh, then he filed for divorce, can I still go through with my papers? Yes, possibly, absolutely, if you experience some abuse in your marriage, right? Um, you, can, you can go through with filing for VAWA if you can prove that you were abused in the marriage and um, you're married to your U.S. citizen spouse. It was a genuine marriage, but it ended in divorce. You can certainly go for it and do it on your own. Reach out to us to talk about that to see whether you're eligible to self-petition under VAWA, okay? Um, uh, the, someone is asking as a green card holder, can I file for my siblings? The answer is no green card holders cannot file for siblings. Only a U.S. citizen can file for their sibling, a U.S. citizen. Um, someone says, uh, tell me what is, what it's, was, what is the amount? I'm going to just paraphrase some of the questions, if that's okay for you guys, for the sake of the viewers, everyone else. Um, what, what is the, how much should a person earn per year um, to file for a family of four people? Okay, so to file and be the sponsor for four people, the government has a really neat chart, okay? Um, and you can Google it as well. It's called the I, I'm not going to need my notebook tonight. Okay. So I'm just going to set it aside. It's called the I-864P chart. Okay. 64P. And that's what I'm Googling right now. And what you're going to do is you're going to look at, um, if you're within the 48 states, uh, this is minus, um, what is it? Minus Alaska and Hawaii. So if you're in um, one of the 48 states, a family of four, according to the latest guideline, the government says that your income must be a minimum of 37,500. I'm not sure what's going on with Instagram. I'm really, uh, I can't troubleshoot right now. Unfortunately, I hope Instagram is still active. So you got that number, 37,500, family of four to make per year to file for family of four. All right, all right, thank you for that question. Um, let's see, what else do you guys have for me? Um, I've answered that one already. Um, Daniel has asked, my, he, says, he says here, my wife recently got paroled into the United States through CBP Custom One. Um, and she has a court date for 2027, and that's the real. That, that's real, guys. 2027 is her hearing date. Um, my adjustment of status, employment EB3, other worker is pending. Do you think I can close 
her court case and add her to my pendant adjustment of status case. You, you will not be able to add your wife to your adjustment of status case at this particular time. Your wife, um, your, your wife uh, entered into the country through that particular process she was paroled in. I, you know, as far, I think that contact us for this, Daniel, contact us because we have two experts on our team who handles our employment based cases. And I don't want to mislead you. I'm not the expert on employment immigration. I don't think that you could add her on right now, but, um, my colleagues, they will be more versed with respect to answering this particular question. Um, now, uh, with her being in removal, one thing you should know what that, what I do know, and I'll share with you now <laughs> is this, that, you know, removal, removal for some people who entered the United States a certain way, if they're in the removal system, they cannot apply for adjustment of status right now. Others can, others can. And so if they can be added to the case, if they can apply for adjustment of status, it is possible for them to get their green card through USCIS and then close up things with the immigration court system. But contact us to discuss that further, okay? There's some complexity to that one. All right, thank you for that. Um, someone says, Prudence, I, did, I missed your question. Um, go ahead and type it in again. Uh, let's see. Freedom now, thank you for that. Um, okay, someone says that I'm a US citizen and I'm pregnant with, uh, I'm pregnant for my husband, first baby. Um, can we speed up the case at the NVC with the doctor's letter? Yes, we've done it that way for a, a pregnant client actually. And our expedite request was approved. There is a way that you can make that request based on your pregnancy. Not the easiest thing in the world to achieve, of course, because, um, some embassies do not see pregnancy as a very big deal for emergency purposes, but we've had, we've made it work for a client every case is different. Of course, I don't know which embassy your husband is going to be processed through, but, um, certainly you can expedite it or contact us to help you with that process with that request. Okay. Um, Facebook, where are the questions from Facebook? Um, let's see. Uh, where's Facebook on here tonight? Um, uh, Hold on a second, expedite. Um, here's a question from Facebook from Ryan. We're looking, how are we looking on DACA? Anything to look forward to in 2024 on DACA? I don't think I've ever, I haven't reported out on uh, DACA with at the earlier part of this year when I did my trends video. I don't have any major prediction with respect to DACA. It is still tied up unfortunately in court. Um, and that's all that I know. No, no, no movement, no traction. I haven't really been following it in all truthfulness as well. So just so you understand, um, Thomas says, do judges still terminate removal proceedings to proceed with my I-130 approval with USCIS? Okay. So Thomas, you have an I-130 approval. Um, it is possible to get your immigration case dismissed based on that. We've done it. We're still doing it. Um, uh, you have to prove to the court that you have that pathway to a green card with USCIS, but, uh, reach out to us to see how we could assist you with that. Okay. And I'm going to just jump back over here. Instagram, are you still here? We were, we were having some technical difficulties. Good evening. I have a misdemeanor. I have problems. Would I have problems renewing my green card? It depends on what that misdemeanor is. Um, it, contact us to, to look into that issue, but it could be a misdemeanor. Even in, you guys have heard me say this before here in New York, it could be a misdemeanor related to a child endangerment uh, matter. And that could be a deportable offense, uh, a removable offense as a crime against a child. So reach out to us to talk about what that misdemeanor is. Do not put that information on social media. Um, wow. I don't know what's going on with Instagram. Um, 
Believe me, guys, I prayed I bind some things up. This shouldn't be happening. Um, okay, so can I self-petition if I overstayed my visa? Um, self-petition, it depends on the category. Yes, certainly, if you are, for people, some people, it's, for, it's based on asylum. Some people, it's based on being a victim of uh, some sort of do domestic abuse. Um, so those are so, so under the humanitarian system, there are ways that some people who are eligible can petition for themselves. Um, you know, but if you're talking about something like on the business side now, if if it's business related, that's a completely different beast right there. Because with the business process, um, eventually you're going to have to get to the point of, am I going to adjust my status? And if so. Uh, under what basis? USCIS will not allow you to adjust your status in under an employment category if you had overstayed your visa. You would have to go back home. So contact us to talk a little bit more about um, your background and if particularly if you have anything on the humanitarian side that's going that's happening. Look at our website, read some blogs, learn about some of the humanitarian pathways, and if something really catches your attention like whoa this is my experience i've been through something like that then it is definitely worth talking to us and having an appointment to discuss the possibilities okay um can you petition for yourself in america green okay i've answered that one already um is there an interview if a child filed for their parent that's a great question generally they do not call you in for an interview um, but sometimes they do, and some of our cases they have because some of the backgrounds of our clients are very, very complex, and they have a history, a lengthy history with immigration. And so even though the child petitioned for the parent, immigration called them in, you know, and, and they were successful in the end. But, um, but generally speaking, most cases they waive those interviews, okay? Um, all right. What other questions do you guys have for me on Instagram? Um, uh, um, let's see. I, uh, uploaded my medical. It's been a year. Can, can I upload my medical? It's been a year. Um, so are you saying that when you applied for adjustment of status, Chrissy, you did not submit the I-693 medical examination? Um, usually what you sh uh, if you did not submit it in the beginning, the government eventually will send you a letter asking you for it. It's just a, you know, like a courtesy letter. That's how they normally do it. Um, and then you send it into them at that point. With immigration, guys, don't just get up one day and say, I'm going to send USCIS this thing. I'm going to update them on my case. I've got this new thing. I want to share it with them. No, don't just randomly send them anything because that can slow down your case. Um, so just wait until they contact you. They reach out to you for, in, for something like your medical, and then you can submit it, okay? Or sometimes they'll tell you to bring something to an interview, and it's at that point you bring it with you to the interview, okay? Um, let's see. Can a green card holder apply for the father who is in the U.S. and overstayed his visa? The green card holder will have to become a U.S. citizen in order to file for the father who overstayed, and the father can get through very, typically very easily through adjustment of status, okay? Oh, good. I'm glad to know that you guys are hearing and seeing me well. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, all right. Excellent, excellent. So I see a lot of rejoins here on uh, uh, Instagram. I'm going to jump over right now to TikTok. Um, let's see. Oops. Um, any way to ask for forgiveness for claiming U.S. citizenship on the I-9 form? So um, asking for forgiveness for falsely claim, this is called falsely claiming to be a U.S. citizen. I'm just going to get Thomas off the screen here. Um, so 
there's no specific waiver necessarily that just target that one issue. The way that it works, friends, is this. you It has to be with respect to a certain other type of process, okay? Like uh, you've heard me say this before, like a U visa crime victims process. And there's a waiver that captures every violation, everything that you've ever done, you know, wrong, so to speak, according to USCIS, according to immigration. So um, that waiver can assist with that. Even on the VAWA side, it could be helpful as well with that kind of case, a T victim case, visa case can also, um, you know, you could be successful. It's difficult, particularly if this is something that um, you've claimed in more recent years, um, you know, after a certain year, right? It's very difficult to overcome falsely claiming to be a U.S. citizen on an I-9 form, a form that is so easy to, um, in some ways, easy to obtain by the government. Not They can't always get it, by the way. They don't always get it because sometimes employers do not always, you know, file the proper paperwork or do the proper audits and procedures related to their employment uh, files. Um, but, uh, you know, the way the government typically catches false claim is certainly on your green card application as you're answering various questions about whether you've ever falsely claimed to be a U.S. citizen. And if you've ever filled out certain applications with a state for a license or, you know, like a driver's license or some nursing license or something like that, or you've registered to vote or, you know, things like that, they, they typically... Um, it's easy for them to catch those things, right? Because the record is right there. Or if the employer tries to do an e-verify, does e-verify, they catch it as well. False claim, guys, I'm not going to mislead you. Hard to deal with. One of the worst sins with immigration. Stay far away from it. Don't do it. Heartbreaking experience that many people go through when they learn that they cannot apply for a green card because of the false claim issue so be very careful not to do it all right um so um uh someone says alien inadmissibility charge was dropped can i fix my legal status with you visa and citizen husband that is very well possible come in talk to us or have a virtual consultation to talk with us about how we could assist you with that. Um, let's see, hold on a second. Also, I see people in the comments responding to some legal questions as well. Be careful with that um, too, be careful with that. Um, yes, three years, uh, you could apply for citizenship um, after having your VAWA green card, you could do early citizenship. Um, so that's, yes, that's it. There's a yes to that. Um, I'm a citizen now. Can I submit my I-130 for my mom and include her spouse? They married when I was 25. So you can file for your mom. You cannot file, um, you can file for your mom. You cannot file for her husband or your stepfather. There is no step parent, step child relationship because they got married when you were over 18. Okay. So, but you could file for her. And after you file for her now, and she gets her green card, she could file for her husband. Okay. Um, I'm married to a U.S. citizen. Can he petition for me without me leaving the U.S.? I have DACA. So it depends on how you came into the United States. Do you have any entry records? How did you enter? Was it with, did someone bring, you know, did you enter with inspection? My hair keeps getting caught up in the mic. How many of you saw that video I did? I was wearing something, I was wearing this, and all of a sudden throughout the entire video, you just heard a, <laughs> my collar was brushing up against the mic during the entire video, I said, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it happens. So my apology if that's what's happening tonight. Um, so the so the question is, I'm married to a U.S. citizen. Can he petition for me without leaving? I have DACA. And so the answer truly is, well, how did you come to the United States? How did you come? 
because entry records will be critical. You'll be able to adjust your status if you could prove that you were inspected and admitted. Otherwise, you, you, would, you will need to go back to the U.S. Embassy to finish the process there. Yes, COVID vaccine is still required, unfortunately. It is, they did not change that uh, requirement. So it's still required at the U.S. Embassy level. Uh, I don't have any news about the U visa case. There's nothing new on that front uh, to report out on. Uh, you already know about the work permit issue. You could get a work permit. It takes a long time, however, for them to approve that. But um, thank you for that question, though. Um, let's see. Um, hold on a second. Um, some questions are being chopped up here. Um, what is the fastest way to petition for my brother? I'm going to ask for my parents and my brother. What is the fastest way to bring your brother here? So the fastest way is, I don't know how old your brother is, but if you do the sibling process, it's going to take, as you know, forever, right? So if your parents become a green card holder, they could certainly file for your brother, uh, file for the brother and bring him here faster than through the sibling process. But is he married? If he's married, that's gonna be an issue. He will face the same lengthy wait as if you had filed for him um, as his sister. Um, so I, I would say the parents' case could be faster if he is single. Um, can you file for adjustment of status based on an approved VAWA if you have a if you have pending removal proceedings? So um, even with VAWA guys, if you're in removal you you can't do adjustment of status just like that you would have to get your removal case uh dismissed which you can you have your approved vow and put, but i don't know what else is on your record that could get in that could interfere with possibly dismissing your case perhaps through um prosecutorial discretion and agreement with ice for them to help you with dismissing the case now that you have your approved vow petition and um if they agree to that and it's dismissed, then you could do adjustment of status with USCIS. Um, does I-130 have to be approved to apply for PD or can it be filed while in the process? So we like to do it with an approved I-130, although we have done, done it with a pending I-130 and we were successful. I, I know one case in which we were successful in that context, but generally speaking, we do not, we don't like that strategy. We really like to be able to show proof to the government, to ICE, to the DHS attorney, that there is indeed a pathway to a green card, and here is an approved I-130. I would say just wait and get that I-130 approval um, and then submit the PD request. <laughs> Someone says, love your voice. Thank you for that. Um, you guys don't want to know the kind of hate messages. I, re You know, I had to say to someone yesterday on tick on uh even, yeah, you, YouTube, I said, listen, um, no one bashes the content creator anymore. That, that's, that, that's over. Be respectful. Those days are over. Don't do that. Don't come after me because Biden has opened the borders. It's not me. <laughs> so I, I don't like that nonsense anymore. Um, and I'm not putting up with it anymore either. Um, let's see. What else? Where are we? Um, Oh, I've answered that one already. Let's get into, um, Adam says, I came to America when I was 10 with my mom via a medical visa. Um, okay, I'm now 30, I have DACA, I got it when I was 23, which means that between 18 and a half and 23 years old, he accrued unlawful presence on his record. Do I have to leave America using advanced parole to adjust my status or is it not needed? So you, you will need to leave. You will need to leave um, because you have that unlawful presence on your record when you, as an adult, 18 and a half and 23. So our government will, although you've had a lawful status through DACA for many years now, the government will still look back at the immigration history when you, from between 18 and a half 
to 23 and said, what happened during that period? Was there, what happened, right? So I don't know, you know, it sounds like you came into America lawfully with your visa. So this really isn't an issue about your lawful entry, whether it's lawful or unlawful. The issue is the unlawful presence during that critical period before you got DACA. And so that's why you're gonna need the 601A waiver. And after you get it, then you can leave to do an embassy process, okay, abroad and come back in. Um, it's going to go well. Just keep the faith and just follow the pro proper steps and um, go and finish up the process abroad, okay? Um, now, someone says that uh, I, hi there, uh, is there a problem if the petition and sponsor only file two years of taxes? The co-sponsor filed three, and we sent that with his W-2s for all three, but still got an RFE. What you should know is that um, when you have a joint sponsor on your case, what the government essentially is doing, guys, is looking at that joint sponsor to meet that full requirement, okay? Uh, the burden uh, the burden is is... The petitioner must still submit the data, the information to the government, but the but the pressure is off the petitioner, so to speak, because the petitioner doesn't meet the qualifications. That's really what you're saying when you have a joint sponsor on your file. So then they look now to the joint sponsor to fulfill all full requirements. You could contact us to take a look at that RFE. You're saying that, well, I did it. We did everything that we were supposed to do with respect to the co-sponsor. Um, uh, but we still got an RFE. Something is missing there. RFE deadlines are shorter now. So um, if you don't have someone helping you with that, contact us to look at that issue for, uh, for you. Someone says, can I switch a lawyer after I submit my papers? It's possible to do that. Um, our, our practice, we don't just take any case where you say, okay, I'm fed up with my lawyer. I've already, the lawyer already did all this work and I'm just waiting and I haven't, I can't reach the lawyer. I just can't get a hold of the person. Therefore, I want to switch to you guys. So we want to take cases. We will take a case when there's something for us to do immediately. We like to start immediately on the file. So for us, maybe immediately, if you come to us and you say, I have all these, I filed, but I have all these issues on my record and you know, I was interviewed twice or this is the issue, we got annoyed, a notice of intent to deny or things got really messy and here's what happened and fraud and you know, everything, marriage broke up, this and that. We will welcome those opportunities and stories welcome them to help you because we think that well you're you're at a critical point in your case and you will most likely need us for the next thing so yes we will then take your case and to, and request all your records and get up to speed with your case anticipating the next move from immigration okay but we don't just take a case because someone you know wants to just switch lawyers after the lawyer did all the work. If there's an appeal for us to do, we would love to do that. Guys, we work on, um, we do motions to reopen, we, we do BIA appeals, we do removal work, um, uh, 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 reopening old cases, we do naturalization, complex naturalization cases, marriage cases, removal of conditions, waivers, all of that. Um, so go on our website, look to see what we do, reach out to us, and, and certainly, um, um, don't be afraid to proceed. Now is the time to move forward. Now is the time, guys, not just because the fees are going up April 1st. No, things are changing with immigration and you need your status. If you have an opportunity, if you're in a marriage, sometimes you get into an immigration in, in a marriage thinking that it's wonderful and great and genuine. And then sometimes they, they, the partner changes on you and becomes very aggressive, threatening, abusive. Don't sit there and take it, or he walks out or she walks out, abandons you. There is a way to help you in that situation as well. And so we do those cases as well to help victims um, of domestic violence. So don't suffer in silence. Reach out to us. Contact us at 888-462-4006 or at mcbeanlaw.com where you can request an appointment with us. Comment below, guys. Share your thoughts with me. I'm in the comments on all of the forums. I'm spending a lot of time with you now comment, responding to as many of your questions. Not questions in the comments because it's harder to do that, but I'm spending time responding to you 
in a way that I think is meaningful to the extent possible, right? <laughs> to the extent possible. You guys are the best. Thank you to those who I know and um, have met with. Thank you for watching. I know you're watching. Thank you. It's, it's so good to know you. And guys, I will see you in the next one on Monday um, at 9 p.m. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thanks for being with me. Bye-bye.